In this video, we're going to take a look at a web challenge from the What Hackers Yearn CTF 2025. This is actually a festival that runs every four or every five years in the Netherlands. It looks really cool. You can see it's sold out this year, or even though it was on at the same time as DEF CON, and the site looks really cool. There are a lot of technical talks and projects, and then like some live music and stuff. I see in previous years they had the music hooked up to like these electric systems and uh, like fire breathing dragons and stuff so the visuals would go like in line with the music. Pretty cool anyway, I hope to go in future, it's a shame it's only every four or five years and is also normally at the same time as DEF CON, but what can you do? Anyway, the challenge we're going to look at is called Fancy Login Form and it has a short description which says we create a login form with different themes, I hope you like it. And there is a hint which says the admin will only visit its own URL. So that gives us quite a big hint right at the offset as to what we need to do. So we have a login box. Maybe we could just go and try some default credentials or try like some SQL injection stuff in here. But considering we've been told that there is an admin bot, that hints at some kind of like XSS or client side path traversal or something like that. So yeah, we want to focus on that. But first, we've also got a random theme button at the top, which will change the theme. You can see here it's CSS slash ocean. And if we go on random, it changes to winter and things like that. If we click on the report button, it says report your current URL to admin so we can log in and check if there's any issues. So we report it. Let's go and take a look in Burp Suite and we'll see that we've got the post report and it sent this URL to the admin. So I'm going to send that to the repeater, Control and R, and then Control and Shift and R to jump to it. And that means we can just go and play around with the URL in here. Like the first thing we'd probably think to do would be to try our own server. So I'm going to create a local web server and then I'm going to expose it to the internet using ngrok, but you can use like request bin or webhook site or something like that. And yeah, maybe we would just go here and just try and put in the URL and click send. The admin will try to visit our link, which will happen every, I think, one minute or 30 seconds or something. But we'll never get a hit back from that. And the hint for the challenge said that the admin will only visit its own URL. So the next thing to think is, well, whenever we load this theme parameter, it seems to redirect the CSS somewhere. So what if instead of providing just like a local directory for it to read the CSS from, we provide our URL. So I'm going to paste that in and click on send. And now it's trying to load the theme from the attacker server at the same directory here, CSS slash winter. I'm going to change that to ocean actually because that's just what I have in my commands from solving it earlier. So it'll be easier for copying and pasting and stuff. All right, so we get the request. It makes the request to .css. So notice that even though we didn't put .css at the end, it's automatically added that, which means we can't provide like a different file extension here. We can't use HTML or, C or uh, JS or something like that. It's only a CSS file that we control. Unless we had some like bypass, like using some weird characters, null characters, a new line or something to cut the extension off from that, then yeah, maybe there's some other tricks with the URL formatting, but I think this is the intended solution anyway. So let us create a file. I'm going to do subaltocean.css and we'll just, I don't know, I don't really need anything in there. I just want to get a hit from it. So we'll go back and send. Okay, we'll visit in a short time and we can take a look at our web server. This time we should get a 200 OK. Oh, we don't because I didn't make a directory. So make the directory CSS. And then I'm going to move Ocean to CSS. Let's just open that up as well so we can populate it with some data. So what was I thinking to put in here? Well, let me take a copy of the example I have. Yeah, I was thinking to just load our URL with a image. So let me take a copy of our new ngrok URL. And then you can see we've just got a random parameter in here. We just want to see if it actually makes the connection. So let's do this again. Send. It's reported. And yes, we get the connection to ocean.css. And then we get the connection to our own server. And if you go and take a look at the web log here, we'll see that it has that flag in it. So from here, I was trying to just do the usual, like, can we put in some JavaScript here? But we don't. In fact, let's take a look at what happens. Let's do 
flag equals and document.cookie. And to test this, because we won't get any output from that in the logs, so the better way to test this would be to go to our style editor in the browser and just replace it with this same code. And if we do that, do we get anything? No, we don't get anything in the console. Okay. Do we get anything in the network tab? Let's see. All right, so paste that in. Network tab, it did not make another request. Console doesn't have anything. Okay, let's go back to what we just had. Maybe there was something else we could put here which would have done something, I don't know. Oh, there we go, flag meow. Okay, so it makes the connection for flag meow, but whenever we put in document.cookie, it doesn't work. So I tried some other things. I tried to like load a import a JS file so we can do something like this. Let me take a copy. Yeah, so then we can provide our own JS file, and then I tried similar things where we're like putting in our XSS payload there, but none of it was working. So after a little bit of searching around, I found some good write-ups and blog posts on CSS data exfiltration, uh, blind data exfiltration, and I'm going to paste in a copy of what we have here. In fact, let me just go back to the site. Let's go to our debugger and have a look at the code as well. Okay, so yeah, the code has the JavaScript in here in order to make the report. So it'll make the post request to report, but it also has something in here which is input equals document .get element by ID password, and then it adds an event listener. So every time a key is pressed in the password field, it will update this event listener. It will it will change the attribute value. And I thought that was interesting because it only has it for the password field, it doesn't have it for the username field, which kind of hints that it's related to the challenge. And yeah, in looking at some previous write-ups, I saw some ideas around this where we could grab a character from the password field. So what's this CSS doing? It's looking for an input called password and then it's checking if the value begins with A. And if it does, it'll make a request to our server with slash A so that we know that's the first character. If not, it checks B, it checks C, it checks D, it checks E, and it just checks all of the characters, basically. We've done A to Z, lowercase and capital, and also digits 0 to 9. And, okay, so let's try it. Let me just replace the attacker server. So we'll do Control and H, and we will replace... Well, let's take a copy of it. Yeah, we'll replace the attacker server. We'll click Save, but I also just want to go and test this myself. So. Let's go to our style editor. Let's paste this in. And then I'm going to go here to the password field and I'm going to type in a capital C. All right. And then let's go to our web log and you'll see we have a C there. And if we do F12, have a look at the console. Or not the console. Okay, I need to reload. Forget it. Well, you would also see that in the network tab there as well. So yeah, basically we can grab the characters that are in the password field. So if the admin has their password auto-filled, we should be able to grab the first character. And once we know what the first character is, we can just go and update all of these other ones. So let's say we work out that the first character was a capital C. We would just go here and we would do a find and replace. Let me turn regex off. And then we would replace that with C. So it's going to look like this. Oh, what happened? Control and H, and oh, it's not replacing the right thing. Place all. There we go. So now it's going to try the same thing again, but it's basically already fixed or hard coded the first character. And we can basically just do that one by one. Let me just test this against the admin. So I'm going to send that request again from earlier. And it makes a request to our CSS, and there we go. We get the first character of the password, which is a capital F. Now, I solved this challenge like a noob, I basically just did this character by character and yeah, there were more characters in the password than expected and I also found out later that there are some special characters so we also need to go and add on some more values here for the special characters. That's how I solved the challenge but I wouldn't recommend it, it leaves a lot of room for error and you know, there's just a lot of manual work involved. You don't know how long the password is going to be and it's not very reusable, etc. So what else can we do? We can use a script and I made a script with ChatGPT and what is it going to do? Well we specify our attacker server so let me go and take a copy of the ngrok address and then we specify the target, the report endpoint, here's the characters that we want to check for 
Auto revisit is because we want to keep going back after each report to get the next character. It's starting with the prefix. What was the prefix? Okay, the prefix is nothing. So that's going to update each time with the currently found password. And then it's going to go through each character in a character set. It's basically going to send through the CSS with that character for each one. So we don't need like a big block here. We've just got a loop to generate the CSS on the fly. And the CSS is going to make the request back to our server. So here's the leak endpoint. There's command line parameters here for you to add all of these manually, but we can just hard code them in this object at the top as well. And all right, yeah, let's try and give it a go. So I've got it set to run on port 80, which means I'll need to run it with sudo. And let's see, okay, we can't use it because we're still running our HTTP server here. So let's get rid of that. All right, so you see it made the report 200 okay. It's serving the CSS and it came back with the first character was an F. It knows it needs to re-report it. So now it's doing it with a zero and then we have an X and it's gonna loop through until it gets the correct password. We can also go and have a look at this on the ngrok server so you'll see each request that's going through and this should be a nice reusable script if you come across any css data exfiltration challenges like this in the future you can just go and modify this script a little bit and hopefully that will work so that's it yeah let's just leave this to recover the full password Okay, that's it. It took a couple of minutes, but it got the full password, which was Foxy Foxtrot and Elastic Beans with some hacker leet speak. So yeah, it wouldn't have been very easy to brute force that, and the script could be a little bit better. Maybe it could close down the server and print out the password at the end, but it knows not to keep repeating requests once it doesn't need to look for another one anyway. So there we go. That is how we solve the challenge. I made a write-up for this and a couple of the other challenges on my Git book. So, oh, okay, my Git book is broken apparently. Yes, yeah, so there's a write-up here which has just some of the other payloads that I tried and a little bit more notes and some of the links that helped me in solving this challenge. So some really cool blogs and write-ups here. And yeah, it has the solve script as well in case you want to use this in future. And that's it. So there were some other challenges. I didn't go through making, I don't want to spend too much time editing this video, so I didn't go through all of them. Let's have a quick run through though. The first one, shoe shop, was a shoe shop you could go to, you would register an account, and then I notice whenever you go to the car, it has your ID is 694, that's your customer ID. Change that to a one, and we have the admins, or the like first users, car which has the flag in it. So a simple IDOR. And then the second challenge was an SQL injection, if I remember correctly. Yep. So we see a post request API.php which has this query in it. And we can manually play around with that or we can use SQL map in order to dump the database. And that's what I did. Then we have another one was a directory busting challenge where the flag was the file or directory. So we basically need to do a character brute force until we got the full flag and the next one was Y2025 CTF time this one had some annoying pop-ups which kept coming up so at the beginning I tried to just stop the JS file from loading altogether by oh, I don't know maybe I don't have this in the notes yeah I tried to stop the paywall.min.js file from even coming through using burp but that broke some of the other functionality, so I went through to debugging, just having a look in the JavaScript source code, which was a little bit obfuscated, and we see that there is a flag in there. So you can either put that together manually, or you can set up a breakpoint and just use a debugger, and then print out the flag, which is the one I went for. Another one we had here was a file upload vulnerability, so we were able to upload a malicious shell, but it would get deleted from the server almost immediately. You can see here, wrong type. And we can use a race condition to basically try to request the file before the antivirus or firewall or whatever has had a chance to delete it. So you can basically use a single packet attack in Burp. You can see we've created a group of tabs here. The first one will upload the file and the next like 10 requests will just make a request for that file name. And yeah, you do that. Actually, I wasn't able to get RCE with it, but eventually I worked out that the PHP info command would recover the PHP info, which had the flag in it. So 
that was it. A couple of other challenges which I didn't solve. There was one which had like a GraphQL endpoint, which I noticed there was an SQL injection in, but I couldn't actually use it to like exfiltrate data or to do RC or anything. I could only do like basic and retrieve all of the columns. So not too sure. I need to wait for the write up on that one. There was also one called Benito Blog, which I tried quite a lot of stuff on. I'm still interested to know how to solve because it had quite low points compared to some of these. And what was another one? There was what looked like a command injection in an image magic command, but you had to do quite a lot of weird stuff around like cutting off lines. I'm thinking maybe there was some way to bypass the WAF filter in it by entering enough of certain characters in order for it to be split up with a delimiter and then whenever it's put back together it would end up with some other character that bypasses the firewall. I don't know. I'm not I'm not too sure. I need to wait for some of the write-ups for these ones but yeah there was a couple of other challenges like a harder one that I didn't really spend too much time on and one which you needed to be on site in order to try. Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry if this video wasn't too good. I've been away for a couple of months, so I'm a little bit out of practice, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Check out the write-ups on Gitbook, and I'll see you in the next one.